Uh, there we go, live on the What's On It Elephant and Castle Facebook page. Joining me today are Neve and Joy, jo Joe, sorry, from the um, Blue Elephant Theater. I'm so happy uh, to chat with you ladies today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, how are both of you doing? So just jump in, Who's do how are you guys doing today? Good. It's my daughter's second birthday today though. And uh, she certainly made me aware of her presence last night because she woke up every 45 minutes. <laughs> but the oh my show gosh. must Did go on. Did she get on. cake in the morning? Did she get cake in the morning or do you wait? No, we waited. <laughs> a bit like we don't deserve cake for a few more hours after she woke up all, up all night. Be right. <laughs> That's funny. Neve, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. I was off yesterday, so I'm just kind of getting acclimatized to being back in London and working again. Where were you? Up in Lancaster. Oh, okay, nice. Now you, I, but you weren't you were feeling very good this morning, were you? Let's let's show show everyone the glass of of the <laughs> the big glasses that you use to drink coffee. <laughs> I love your really, the size of your yeah. coffee cups. It's really small. It's really really small. Yeah. <laughs> but it you're you're gonna have better. to get big. You're gonna have to get bigger bigger coffee cups. Um, can you, uh, who, I don't, it doesn't matter who starts, but um, I've, I've done a little bit of reading up on the Blue Theatre and uh, I've had a look through your website. I think the work that you guys are doing is amazing, but me describing it is not the purpose of, of this live. So who would like to start off, um, you know, telling us what you guys do? Um, well, I'll start. So uh, yeah, you already know I'm Joe, and this is Neve, and we are. Um, it's important to note that we are co-directors of Blue Elephant Theatre, co-artistic directors, um, but we also have our shared responsibilities as well. So um, we, the reason that we are co-artistic directors is because the way that our theatre works, is in some ways, is quite unique. So we have a participation side of our work and we also have a professional artistic side of the work but the two things hold equal importance in the um in the life of blue elephant and they also interact really well so um our participants and our artists learn from each other and there's a lot of crossover so neve and i work quite closely together to ensure that the two halves of the blue elephant life um, intertwine well and kind of work harmoniously together. Um, and so that's why we are the co-artist directors. Um, but I'm also the participation director and we have quite, um, quite a buoyant and thriving participation department. So we work with local schools uh, and we also work uh, in extracurricular terms. So we run our own projects for young people outside of school hours. Um, we do all sorts of things in t with all sorts of ages. So we have some workshops at the moment for toddlers aged one to three. Um, and then we also do adult participation activities as well. So we have a community play and intergenerational community play happening at the moment. Um, and all of the work for, that we do for people is free of charge. So nobody pays anything to, to join. You have to pay something for the ticketed shows, of course, but even that is um, really competitively priced in terms of London theatres. Um, and so really our main priority is to work with the community. So we programme shows that we think the community will be interested in, our local community, our neighbours. Um, we co-design our projects as well with our our participants so we have like youth panels who help us to decide what the shape of the project should look like or what kind of um, special activities we should be running and then the people who take part in the work of course um, also kind of lead the direction of it so the way that we often work is that we're asking people what their opinion of the work is uh, and what we should be doing next rather than telling them and that's quite important mm. in terms of the way we work um, and I think also we have a, a specific remit in terms of focusing on mental health. And it doesn't have to be a focus that's in the forefront of everything we do, but it's it's kind of part of everything. So um, we're constantly checking in with everybody that we work with to make sure that their mental health is thriving and that we are, um, you know, we are keeping that 
conversation alive because it is something that we feel is really important for um specifically for our community and specifically in these times as well so mental health is definitely a focus um we also have been undertaking quite a lot of work recently um to do with reducing youth violence um, and looking mm -hmm. at the starting points for child child criminal exploitation um, and that's been some really interesting um powerful work as well and working with local schools to address those kinds of issues um and uh and then obviously we have in terms of our youth theatres um and our ongoing projects the important part about that work is that it is so consistent so our youth theatre has been running for 12 years probably almost 15 years in fact but in a different uh in a different guise um and uh yeah it's it, it's kind of something that that's seen a lot of young people through many years of their life they've kind of grown up within our youth theatre and um a, a couple of them even now work for us as staff members as well so um it's quite special in the sense that it has a longevity and it's there to work with the community and for the community wow there's so much that i want to i want to um come in and talk with but neve do you have anything that you'd want to add to that I'll talk a little bit about the professional program. Well, this book talking about our yeah our young people. I think we've we've employed at least four people who've been part of our young people's theatre. Um, and with the the community play we're running now, because we don't often run that many things for adults. Uh, I think we have at least five or six members at the moment who um, used to be in our young people's theatre. It's quite nice to see them all come back. Um, especially when it was like about eight years ago when they were part of the young people's theatre. Um, and then on our yeah on the professional program side, we are having a bit of a soft start for this this season. We've just had we we didn't reopen for shows until a couple of weeks ago because we were having all this ventilation works done to our our theater space to make the airflow a lot better because it was mm -hmm. pretty pretty awful. Um, and now we're gonna have, we're having residencies with emerging artists that are supported by the Idlewild Trust. So those are those are a, um, for artists who've literally just graduated this year or last year, kind of got a bit um, well shafted for want of a better word, word by the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And that's always a tough time anyway. We, we always had to kind of focus on that at that period anyway, because it's really tough coming out of training and trying to enter the industry. Um, we'll have a Christmas show that Joe and I are writing. Um, <laughs> we need to get on to that. Um, <laughs> and then after Christmas, we're going to have the the culmination of the community play, plus some R and D of some projects, um, some of the some of the two plays that won our playwriting competition last week, year, and then um, a show called "Give Me the Sun," um, which is, again is part of this kind of intergenerational um, work. That's so we've been we're really excited to have "Give Me the Sun" on because we've been working towards that for about three years, I think. Mm -hmm. And we got a project grant from the Arts Council that made that possible for it to be an in-house show because otherwise it wouldn't be possible. Mm, beautiful, amazing. I, I'd like to kind of maybe like there's so many there's a few things that I want to focus on like the because uh, you guys have divided down into the participation and then you know the more the the, uh, the the professional type side of things. But then you talked about mental well-being and community, so I want to try to fit it all in um, in that. I suppose the participation side, a lot of people who get involved in the arts when they're young, they're doing it to aspire to something. So, you know, to become the next, and I'm, I'm, look, I'm trying to make a comparison to sport too, to when people see someone like Emma Raducanu do really well at tennis or, or you have younger people uh, aspire to be the next Kira Knightley in acting or Phoebe Waller-Bridge or, or something like, you have these things where people are getting involved in it because they, I don't know, maybe this kind of want to be that person or, or be like be as successful as that person. But um, Joe, I think you've, you've worked with over 10,000 people um, in your time there, right? And like how important is just, just taking part, you know, just showing up and letting people, whether they're one to three years old or, you know, 10 to 50 or 50 plus, what, how important is just people showing up and being, you know, just participating in the arts and being able to express themselves um and 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 let loose really 
Yeah, well, hugely <laughs> to, to answer. Um, I mean, some of our participants who have taken part in years and years of youth theatre activities have gone on to do something totally unrelated at university. And we're immeasurably proud of what they're doing now in terms of um, taking their next career steps and, and, and fulfilling some of their life dreams. But it's got absolutely nothing to do with theatre. Um, but I think What's really um, what really stands out is what they do gain the soft skills that they gain from taking part. So things like increasing confidence is, um, you, you know, you might think that's quite an obvious one for theatre because they're going on stage and talking in front of strangers. Um, but that's an incredibly good skill to have in any um, in any job, in any walk of life, it doesn't have to be job related. It could just be about um, making friends in the playground. You know, it could be anything. You need to be able to know yourself and know how to speak to others. I think one of the things that we learn a lot and also talking about the mental health awareness is empathy as well. So learning about other people, not just learning about yourself and focusing on your own confidence and your own ability to speak to others, but it's actually what do other people need to hear and how um, how do you affect them and how can you do that in a positive way? So learning about teamwork and about empathy is certainly something that which we would encourage all of our young people to do as well. And also, like you said, just showing up that can be a challenge, especially when you're a teenager and you want to lie in bed all day. Um, but committing to something and seeing that commitment through is hugely beneficial. And I think for some of the young people who start when they're quite young, they um, they haven't really had the opportunity to commit to something and see it through and then see the final result. And the journey of their first um, term with us is really interesting to watch because you might get some young people who don't really know why they're there. The concept of creating a show is, is like it's too far ahead in their world to really think about what they're going to do in three months time, for example. And the idea of rehearsals is a bit strange. You know, they just think, oh, mm. I'll pull it. I'll pull it out of the bag on the day. But what they're not thinking about is how the other people around them feel when they're pulling it out of the bag or they're not rehearsing it's actually like it's kind of unsettling for everybody else and so they'll go through this process of learning all of those things about learning how to do it for themselves and then also learning how to be there for one another and then they get the final show and very often some of our young people that come um won't have lots of opportunities to succeed so like we might have some people who um are taking part because they don't have any other opportunities to take part in other things, or it might be that, that traditionally they're the ones who are always getting into trouble, or they're the ones who don't quite fit into the academia bubble in school or something. And so there's often not a lot of celebration opportunities for those young people. But when they get up on the stage and they have their friends and their family there, and of course we're rooting for them, the whole audience is rooting for them. There's this sense of like, joy and you know driving forward in this room and then they achieve it at the end and they hear the applause and they get their certificates and their congratulations it is a bit of a game changer for some young people because they've done it they've been there the whole term they've achieved something they've got to the end and now next time you ask them to see something through to take on a challenge that they think might not be possible they know that they've already done that before and they have that kind of um I suppose, confidence and forethought, they're able to give something a bit more forethought, they're able to see ahead of what can be achieved. And that's a really special gift to be able to give anyone. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, it, it seems like you guys cater for just about everybody um, in terms of age groups. Um, and how, how do you manage, say people, uh, I can imagine people at different age groups, the younger ones will just throw themselves into, you know, running around on stage. And, and I, geez, I, the one to three year olds, I would just, I, it would just be so <laughs> adorable to be able to watch that. Um, but I've known some people in, in my community in, in recovery um, who've had a lot of social anxiety and they have found that the thing, the thought that the, the, the discipline that helped them was acting or um, improv, doing things like that, where it was really, really difficult for them to do. But when they did it, it was, Joe, as you mentioned, about this sense of accomplishment. How do you work with people who maybe are a little bit older, um, who've been through some stuff, and maybe they have this sense of social anxiety, which is keeping them from 
taking part in the, the services that you have, how do you gently kind of walk them through into that, that kind of journey of, of just starting and, and meeting people and be feeling welcome and feeling like they're, because I think that was a big part for, for me, especially in my journey is I, I was always just, I wanted to do things, you know, like maybe go down to a local theater and learn, learn a bit of improv, but I was just too, I was so scared of being judged. Um, and, and I'm just interested to know people who may, who might be really interested in, in taking, in hearing this and saying, oh, I really want to do that. But I'm so scared because these people, when they get up on stage, they're so shiny and happy and re really inside I'm scared, <laughs> you know? I'm not sure everybody that comes to us is shiny and happy. <laughs> like, we have we have just normal people. That's the key thing. Mm. We just have like everyone and everyone. But uh, Neve, why don't you talk a bit about the writers group here and about like people that join the writers group? Because I think that that question yeah. really applies there. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, and I think um, I think what we really try to do there is make it a very for want of a better term, like a very safe space, a space where people are feel comfortable and there's no pressure to share or no pressure to turn up with anything, but just to be there. Um, you share if you you share something if you want to share it, but it's it's kind of creating a space for everybody. Writer scripts only every second week, but for everybody to kind of do a little do a little writing. Like some generally, mm -hmm. we do take some time during during the session to to turn the cameras off, turn the microphone off and write something you don't have to share it back there's, there's no pressure that way it's sort of and then all the group is I mean we're very lucky with the group who, who comes are very supportive and they throw in ideas and everyone builds everybody else up um, but we work to like create that space where you are mm. where you are able to build everyone up um, where that is what's expected rather than rather than you know critique or or you know people putting people on the spot I, I hate to be put on the spot and I wouldn't want to make anyone feel that way, especially if they're, you know, it's the first or second um, meet up and they haven't, like a lot of people won't have met in real life because we do writers group on Zoom. Um, I think the community play, which Sony just started as well, it's very, it's quite a similar setup. We have, we're bringing adults all together from, from very different backgrounds. Um, and it was, and Jess and Ori who run that very much like, We'll start with the games we'll start with the exercises kind of nothing that puts you on really on the spot okay the games you know you have to you know there's a certain amount of coordination involved but there it's not like you as a person are really exposed um it's about building confidence building that feeling of being a team and being able to laugh with each other maybe a little bit at yourself but only insofar as things like oh i've missed the ball but i'll get it next time um i think possibly the the groups where we're actually finding it tough is rather than adults because i think with adults as well you can kind of be like this is your space and i'm not going to put you under pressure but also you are an adult and you can turn off your camera or leave the room is possibly the teenagers at the moment the older teenagers are they're, they're turning up but they're a little they're turning up in person but possibly not in spirit just yet and i think joe was saying maybe that's an effect of of lockdown and not having to not having to bring that energy um yeah. i do think that yeah i also i was going to talk about our adult group um because we've recently just done some work who, with adults who have experienced a brain injury so that could be anything from an accident to a stroke but it um it does make a difference to their abilities so we focus on ability rather than disability and i think that's a really important thing for any group actually is to look at what strengths you have and use that as your starting point so particularly for anybody who might be feeling a bit reluctant this goes for adults and children anybody who's feeling a little bit reluctant um this space is yours like it belongs to whoever steps foot in it and then we as the facilitators, rather than kind of dictating something to you, we are using you as a person and all that you come with, your entire package um, as our starting point. So in that sense, you can never be wrong, if that makes sense, because you are exactly who you are supposed to be. And um, in terms of, yeah, in terms of the adults who had brain injury, there was lots of different things that we had to do. So for example, um, 
uh, recall was quite issue. So memory recall was, was a, a bit of an issue for us. So we tailored the game so that we didn't have any, any need to remember anything, which was quite a challenge, actually. It's a new challenge for us because a lot of drama games, you know, you might be like trying to remember who's done what. Um, but actually things, it, it, was a, it was a really welcome challenge as well because things can get stale. And so it's yeah. good to be rethinking and outside of the box. Um, and the same for the, um, the idea of performance. These adults didn't want to try and force themselves into learning a script. It was not an appropriate thing to ask them to do either. So we were like, okay, well, that's absolutely fine. Let's just use the scripts style it out we've got scripts on stage we're going to own that i mean on stage we were on zoom at the time um and we also tailored the script so neve was writing them and we tailored them specifically to the speech patterns of people as well because their speech patterns some of them um were affected by their brain injury and again rather than forcing that person outside of their comfort zone we worked entirely within their comfort zone and found the wonderful things within that that's uh, that's amazing. I'm I'm so I, I'm thinking too now that a lot of people when they they see a theater group or drama they they're always thinking about the performance, and it's really interesting to 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 learn that you guys have the, have a writing course as well. And I'm wondering, the one thing that I've learned about theater too, having a couple of friends that are in in West End productions, is all of the stuff that goes on behind the performance. You know the the stage, the lighting, as you mentioned, the cameras and the sound. Are, are there are there opportunities for people to get involved with that as well as so if for for maybe who someone who would really want to come down for the community, but performing or or learning lines might be a bit daunting for them. Um, do they have opportunities to get involved in that kind of you know the the day to day running of the theater and what it takes? We have some work experience opportunities um, and interns and. Um, Internships generally, people approach us more about that kind of more bespoke. I'd love us to do some sort of technical theater course for the teenagers um, because I do really feel like that's a part of theater that is often that often you don't know about until you start actually working in it. Um, and but with our community play, I'm hoping that there would be opportunity, a little bit few opportunities to for the people involved if, if people don't want to actually act that they can. Um, a bit more at the back of technical theater we do have a very very small tech box so it's not like <laughs> it's not going to be in a sort of uh, a situation where we can be like well one person's going to operate some lights and one person operate the sound you'd be like mm. on top of each other um but if people could take turns out so i'm hoping we'll have a bit of that as part of the community play where people can learn a little bit more about what's involved in the technical theater side of side of things um and then at other stages, we have had people come in to who have requested to do work experience, particularly around te technical theater. Um, but they tend to be adults rather than than young people. Um, we did try. We did have master classes at one point about about technical theater, and we'd love to do a bit more, or to kind of, yeah. or to potentially. I think like step at one point step is so the theater education partnership. Before the pandemic, I think there was talk of maybe a, a um, joint project around technical theater, like with everybody's capacity being stretched. But, um, but again, that got put on hold by the pandemic, but yeah. you never know. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you, I know we were gonna talk about this, but the last year and a half has, has seen the restrictions of people's ability to show up and to be creative. And, and Joe, you mentioned about maybe that's perhaps why some of the teenagers are having difficulty expressing themselves, but um, in, in general, I, I suppose just because it, we are coming out of it, I, I'm going to have to ask, or do I have to ask, I'm going to ask about the impact that, um, that you've seen on, on, I suppose, people's ability to be creative. Um, and just, I, I think what I want to try to do is emphasize just how important it is that we do have spaces to be creative because of what the last 18 months has shown us is that people being stifled you know, being alone, not being able to express themselves, not being able to have physical contact with people. Um, it's been a huge detriment to people. And, and how, how have you seen it um, throughout your, your, your community? Well, I, when um, I got back from maternity leave, um, we were still sort of midway through. Uh, I think we'd had lockdown one, we were approaching lockdown two. It was all <laughs> all a bit confusing um but one of the first things that i did when i got back from maternity leave is i started our playing up project which is the one to three year olds and the the remit with that project is about 
kind of looking at the different um, learning points and um, uh, you know key things that one to three year olds are aiming to get to like little achievements um, and but we but but primarily we wanted to look at how the adults are in that um, family setup and looking at the power of play and almost giving the adults um, permission and also um, embracing this idea that that you can play with your child and that's a really important part of their learning um, and so don't think about it as a waste of time but embracing it um, and it, obviously, you know, I just got back from maternity leave, so it's very much my own personal journey with these with these people that I was working with as well. And initially, we had to start it on Zoom, um, but we had such a brilliant response to it, so much so that I even had a parent who joined in from their car because they didn't want to miss it, but they didn't have a space in the home at the time to take part in because of some people were working from home, children were at home as well, and they needed this quiet little bit of space. So they did a drama workshop from their car, which was amazing. Um, but then as soon as we could, we opened it up to have it um, face to face. And it was like a breath of fresh air, um, like just blew through the theatre <laughs> and through this project as well. So we kind of we we changed certain aspects of it. We built in more time for parents to talk to one another and to provide that kind of emotional support to one another within the structure of this creative workshop. Um, and I think that that's that's really important part of how to be creative because you can't just switch it on it's part of who you are and so you've got to explore who you are in order to get the most out of your own creativity as well so helping these parents to just be in the space to talk to one another and feel comfortable together then enabled them to play more freely with their children which then enabled the children to learn that creativity even more um and and i also think in terms of like the skill sets that they were learning. Of course, these children were pandemic babies. So they had never been in a room with other children. Um, oh. And it was an amazingly powerful thing to see some, some little people <laughs> aged one and a half, two years old, um, walking into space and sort of freezing initially seeing all these other children of their own age and all these adults and all these colorful objects that they were going to start interacting with and um just seeing their little minds being blown <laughs> it was incredible but obviously everybody was blown in a fantastic way um nobody oh. was feeling completely out of their depth because we knew and we specifically structured the workshops around the fact that these are the first interactions that these children are having so um we trod very carefully but it was really special to be able to do that um you both are co-artistic directors um i'm wondering what what individual discipline or part of 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 um your artistic expression really resonates with you as individuals. Neve, Neve, is it is it writing? Is it performing? Is it directing? What's kind of what drew you into into drama? Drew me. Oh wow. I started doing drama as a kid. <laughs> right. my, um, no, my mom decided I should do drama as a kid because I was a shy kid and she has regretted that ever since I decided to do drama <laughs> at uni. Um, I did drama in English at uni and everyone in my family and friends from school all expected me to major in, in English. And then I ended up majoring in drama and um, going on to work in theater. And um, yeah, my family still have, you know, this talk. So like, you know, you've got loads of transferable skills. Um, <laughs> even though they're there, also very proud of me. Um, and I, my first, the first show I did at Blue Elephant, I was a stage manager. I think I, I have a love of writing, but I haven't, I mean, part of the reason of setting up the writers group was that I was not prioritizing my own writing because, you know, take, um, running a theater takes a lot of, a lot of your time. Um, mm. And I have kind of an aptitude for stage management producing. I like being an enabler um, and going back to the question about people being away from their creative opportunities um, during lockdown, what we really, that what was kind of almost amazing to us and kind of feeding us was when we, very early on in the first lockdown when we pivoted to running drama sessions online and saw the effect on the young people because at that time I think a lot of extracurricular and school activities didn't really embrace online until like the third lockdown really mm. um 
and so the like especially seeing the primary school age children like every Saturday like seeing their friends on screen and being able to interact was oh. was brilliant it was sort of like this is why we do it and at the same time we were we pivoted to trying to like we always tried to support emerging artists but we were we were like you know any emerging artist if you want a hand with a funding application just get in touch that sort of way um because it was it was incredibly tough like like you say there for art freelance artists in particular they had um they had all their they had everything taken away from them overnight really the yeah. kind of purpose mm. but also their income mm. like and there's any sense of stability and um and the jolt that that has been I think even though we are like officially the industry is open again I think there's an awful lot less work going around it doesn't seem like that I think from like social media and stuff it seems like everyone's like really busy and I think there is that I think either everyone's people are either incredibly busy because there's all the projects are happening at once or they're not and they're like is this industry leaving me behind so it's a very strange time even now as we kind of people try to recover from all that um we're trying to be there to to support um sorry going back to answering this actual question is that yeah i like it um i think i i'm a good behind the scenes person where i'm like I say trying to produce trying to stage manage um and giving that support to people to enable them to create their work beautiful joe what about you i'm so i have to apologize because the light is really it's messing up with my screen right now and there are people walking around so i, I do i do apologize for oh, you um, look lovely you look like you really do <laughs> yeah you look you look uh, like oh. you know there's celestial light coming from behind you with your brand. <laughs> just need, need a halo here right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> jo, yeah joe um yeah so back to i suppose just to 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 what 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 drew you into this um what drew you into drama and to getting to where you are today yeah, well, I think probably I had quite a um, like a traditional routine in the sense that, you know, I was really good at drama in school and then I went to do drama at uni. Um, but it was and when I came out of uni, I have to I'm not going to mention the name of my university um, or however many years ago that was. But I really didn't understand all of the different roles that you could take within the world of theatre. I pretty much thought you could be an actor a director, a writer or a costume person, you know, I really, I really had no sense of the breadth of, of work that this industry has. Um, and so initially I was kind of pottering about thinking, should I, should I be an actor? And actually I took um, a professional role at Blue Elephant in a show um, in my early career, but actually it was at university I discovered something called Forum Theatre which was when it was kind of just gaining some popularity in the UK. And now I think it's very well known, but back then it wasn't. And so it kind of pivoted me off into kind of like a theater for social change sort of avenue. Um, and it was there that I discovered facilitation and started working in primary schools. And I really have never looked back since. Um, so for me, the driving force is facilitating with people. I'm very much a people person. Um, I like being in the room with people and that's, I don't know, I suppose that's when I, that's when I come alive a bit, really. <laughs> I'm not saying that I fall asleep every time I'm looking at a spreadsheet, but it's not my forte. <laughs> um, you sound very similar to me. I don't know. I, I don't even know how to open spreadsheets, so <laughs> but put me in a room with people and I'm okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm I'm also like, you know, um, as you guys have spoken, you've spoken so nicely about what you guys do and um, and the children and the adults and the writing classes. And, and the thing that um, the other day, I know on Sunday it was it was hashtag mental health day. And it, it really interests me to to why, you know, I know why I'm I do what I do and I know why I work with who I work with because around, you know, health. Of, of, of our a holistic look at the mind and the body and our spirits. Um, and, you know, mental health seems to, you know, obviously it has this huge stigma around, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious or I'm depressed or I have anxiety around, you know, being around people. And there's all these different spectrums of mental health. Um, and it's something that people are talking about. And I, and I, I love the fact that you guys are, are developing programs to, to keep, see, because again, people always think about mental health as being, I'm sad, you know, or I'm anxious rather than, oh, I go to the gym to, 
to have, you know, to, to look after my body, why can't I go to the theater and be around people and have programs developed me to make sure that, you know, this thing, my cognitive working is operating as best as it can be. Um, what, like, I suppose what, the passion and the, 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 the drive for somebody to say, I'm actually going to help people with regards to their mental health comes from somewhere normally. And I'm, I'm interested to know the programs that you guys have and the, you know, where you kind of got that, that, that spark of being able to say, Hey, we're actually going to help people with their mental health. Hmm. I, I think actually probably the way that it started was our work in secondary schools. So some of our initial this, I mean, this is going back a long time now. So it was before mental health was popular <laughs> to talk about. And actually it was back in the days when nobody was talking about it. Um, we saw how these these issues start to germinate in some of our young people and one of the um productions that we that we kind of uh co-created with a group of students from a secondary school um was called man of the house and that one really stood out to me because it was um it was a show about how single parent families can have this added pressure especially if you have a young man in a house and he then has to become the man of the house in place of a father figure mm. um and the mm. kind of pressures that that might put on a young man who's still in education who's looking at what his future goals you know his his life goals are and how to meet them um but then he has caring responsibilities for younger siblings maybe he has some emotional responsibilities for a parent potentially even financial responsibilities and all these things were not just things that we as a group of actors and creators in a room decided should be important. This is what the young people in our schools told us was their truth. Um, and so I think for, for me, that really sparked um, an interest in mental health. And we sort of started developing much more work around that. We also worked with um, Time to Change. And that was a charity which was focused on um, destigmatizing mental health. So we worked with a local group in Peckham um, who were basically service users of a day center which supported their mental health. And we did something which was like, in my opinion, hugely brave for these people who experience daily stigma about mental health concerns and issues that they have. Um, but they created a production which was set in a library called Shush. And um, and it basically like it, it encountered all of these characters merging in this kind of universal space of a library and exploring mental health uh, issues on stage. And then the role of the actors changed after the um, play had finished. They then went upstairs into our bar area and started having conversations with the audience. And the conversations were um, truthful and honest about what it is like to be somebody who suffers with mental health concerns. So that is a huge, a hugely brave thing to do for somebody who is facing stigma. And we then took that play into um, different places as well. So we took it into, um, or we took like a version of it into a local church. And we faced stigma such as somebody saying, mental health problems are just the devil working in you so you should just ignore them and you know this because this is like i say back in the day it wasn't that long ago we're not that old but um <laughs> but you know it was when um it's certainly for some people this is still an issue that there just isn't necessarily the education out there or the awareness and so we we have some very brave participants who, um, you know, were really sort of like dynamic and wanted to change the culture and the stigma around it. And I think those those two projects were probably the real catalyst because we thought, well, if those guys can do it and those guys can step up and be so brave, we have uh, like we have a responsibility to provide a legacy really for that. Um, and yeah, I think that's sort of been it's been a focus ever since. Is there anything you'd want to add to that, Neve? I think you're right. I think it's that was Samantha of the House was before I was full time and kind of the role I'm in. And then Shush was 2012, 2013 when I was just in this when I was starting. So I do feel like we've had a focus on mental health and well-being for a long time. I think it's sort of yeah, that we've seen what people can do. We've seen the effects, I think, as well, that being involved in consistent drama activities can have on people as well so it's almost like 
And I think we've also seen in our own experiences, you know, a lot of, you see how terrible um, poor mental health can be as well. And so you're seeing what benefits you have and you're a bit like, well, why wouldn't we have this? Why wouldn't we try to do this? We, we always say like, we're very clear. We're not experts. We're not drama therapists. We're not going to promise anything we can't do, but um, we do see that engagement in, in our activities and even the ones that aren't necessarily designed, you know, that aren't supposed to be about a mental health and well-being outcome have that, can have that impact um and we're also interested in, you know we're interested in professional work that I say professional you know putting on shows as well that explore we're kind of interested in shows that kind of explore anything really that is topical to our local communities or that kind of is topical to contemporary London and mental health certainly is um and that shows things in different lights or is revealing um mm. it's kind of an all-around interest I I, th I think even the you don't even have to have specifically designed programs with regards to helping people with mental health. I think as you started off, you know the things about coming together, community, um, you know, <clears throat> performing, reading, writing. They're all things that help people with cognitive development. And I think more so we know we just we know that people when they're interacting with other people in a community-based place, their um, mental health is generally. Uh, a little uh, it's better and uh, you know that's ultimately what you guys are, are providing is community and i think that's the thing is like there's there's the elephant and castle in the area there's all these beautiful things happening and i think so many people want to take part in them but again it's that one thing of like just that little i'm scared i'm scared that i'm going to be judged i'm scared that i'm i'm i'm, I'm not going to look like they look i'm scared that i'm not going to be able to speak the way they speak or that i'm going to have a funny accent or i'm going to be just someone that's different um, and I think, you know, so what you guys are doing, which is making a space that's inclusive to people, um, and I, I absolutely love and adore what you guys are, are, are doing, and I, I am going to go see a play, Neve. I think I will I'll pay for the tickets, you just tell me how to get them. Um, I don't want to name name names of, of people, but Brian, <laughs> I'm going to come see your play. I'm going to come see your play um, and, and you mentioned that you're getting ready for Christmas. So so we're, we're, we're kind of coming to the end of our time. But can you can you give people a little bit of a, an idea what you guys are going to be doing through the holidays? Yeah, so <laughs> Neve and I literally were discussing this at the end of the week. Am I right to do a little taste and reveal, Neve? I think, I think so. I think we're set on the idea. That's why I had to uh, just coordinate with her then because we, we this is such a germ of an idea but i think we're going to do a show um which the working title is going to be um the science behind santa um and mm. we're <laughs> we're basically going to be doing a christmas show for children and it will be in well for families um it will be in the last week of the school term and then depending on whether or not we have availability we have also had some requests outside of the school term as well for a few shows so we might carry on and it will also be on the weekends so anyone and everyone is welcome to come and watch it the tickets are really competitively priced so they're only three pounds per ticket if you're a Southwark resident if you're a Southwark resident um, a little bit more if you're not yes exactly a little bit more if you're not but hopefully everyone will be coming to see it because it's still much much cheaper than the cinema um and uh we and also we do like additional like if if there are carers involved and uh, there's additional things so please do check out the website for that and yeah there will be more revealed about the secret behind santa when we get to that point <laughs> because we're really Just at the early stages give us a tiny tiny clue well, about the science behind santa Yes, yeah, sorry, the secret science. I can't even get the name right. The science yeah. behind Santa. So we think it's going to be the journey of a scientist trying to prove the existence of Santa. Um, I don't know if you can get any science to prove the existence of Santa, but we're fairly sure that the audience will know whether Santa exists yeah. or not by the end of the yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely amazing guys what you're you're the work that you're doing i i absolutely adore i will come and see um the play so um but can people right now how would they get in touch with you and how would they make inquiries about everything that we've talked about today how can they get in touch um they either joe or i our email addresses are quite simple they're joe at the and theater uk or neve at the and theater uk um most things are on our website some of the shows are just being put up so the christmas show as joe said it's a working title so once we 
once we settle on the title, um, <laughs> that will go online um, on our on our website. And we also we're on social media. We're Blue Elfin Theatre on Facebook, but on Instagram and on Twitter, we are at BET Camberwell, which makes it a little bit harder to find, I think. But it's uh, BET is the abbreviation for Blue Elfin Theatre because we're lazy. Um, <laughs> It's a good idea. <laughs> it's a good idea. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me uh, today, Neve and Joe from Blue Elephant Theater. Um, Joe, you've got your hands full um, with a two year old, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so have, have fun today. Neve, Thanks. thank you so much. I know, I know you were feeling a little bit poorly this morning, but I thank you so much for, for coming on and chatting with us and making the effort. I really appreciate it. Um, Thanks so much for I, having I've us. I've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed talking with you guys and, and thanks everybody at the Elephant and Castle community. And don't forget to join me on Thursday at 11 for a normal Tough Through Tender workshop. Uh, we'll see you all then. Ladies, goodbye and have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.